Hey guys, this is Dimitri with Joe's Gaming and Electronics and in today's video I'm going to show you how to replace the power board on your Sony's 1000 XM4 headphones. So for this repair I'm going to be using a pry tool, a 1.5 Phillips flathead and I'm going to go ahead and use a Phillips plus screwdriver from this nice toolkit that we do sell on our website. The link will be in the description below. If you don't have one, I highly recommend these because they come with all these cool bits that you can use. And they also come with some nice tweezers that you can use to solder wires. Or let's say you have some stray gray or black hairs that you need to yank out, they will do the job. We're gonna go ahead and use the tweezers for this repair as well. And we're gonna use the Philips Plus PHO bit. Also, if you don't have a pry tool and you would like to get one, we do sell those on our website as well. The link will be in the description below as well. Alrighty, so now that we got our tools, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to replace the power board on your Sony's XM4s. The power board is located on the right side of the headphones where the charger port is. And we're gonna go ahead and show you the steps on how to do that. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and remove the ear pad. We're gonna use this pry tool to do so. For the ear pad, you just wanna go ahead, pop one side up once one side has popped up, you can use your hand to gently take off and pop the rest of the clips out. Don't pull too hard because you don't want to break the clips on the ear pad. Once that is complete, go ahead, set the ear pad aside and remove the foam piece out of the speaker. Next thing that we're gonna do once we have removed the ear pad and the foam piece is we're gonna go and go ahead and remove the four silver screws. These screws also have little arrow indicators on the housing. So if uh, you see these, you're gonna know exactly where to place the screws back in if you ever have to remove all the other black screws. So just keep that in mind, the silver ones are the longer ones. For this specific repair, we just need to remove the four silver screws. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Once we remove the four screws, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take the headphones and fold them so that you can see the little crack right there. We're gonna take our Phillips minus screwdriver. You could use the pry tool as well, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of work it a little and push it out like so. Once I have pushed it out, you can go ahead and grab this piece and pop it off. You wanna be careful because there is a ribbon connected to the power board because this is the touch pad for the volume and the pause and play. Once we have opened this up, we're gonna go ahead and take this ribbon and pull up and unplug it from the power board like so. Once we have done that, go ahead, set that aside. Next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and unplug and remove the battery. Go ahead and just grab the wires, pull. You have now successfully unplugged the battery and there is one more ribbon that we're gonna remove. Pop that up. Once that is complete, go ahead and remove the battery. When you remove the battery, make sure that you pry it from the top. Don't do it from the bottom because at the bottom you have a LCD here where these wires connect to you don't wanna damage it. So to ensure that doesn't happen, always pry from the top. Go ahead and use your pry tool. Just pry up the battery. Once it pops off, go ahead and remove it, set it aside. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and unhook the main wire from the power board. You wanna be careful, this clip does break really easily. 
So you want to make sure that when you take it off that you're evenly prying it up. There are little divots on the ends here that you're able to kind of, if you have fingernails, don't chew your fingernails because they do come in handy. If you got fingernails, go ahead and hook one on one side and use the flat head on the other side and make sure you evenly just gently work it until it pops out. Once it pops out, go ahead and just move that out of the way. And the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move these wires, pop them out of the wire holders like so. And this power board, it does have two screws that you will need to remove. There's one right here, and then there's another one located right up here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those screws. Once those screws are removed, the next step that you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and unsolder the microphone wire that's located on the speaker. You're gonna unsolder the mic wire that is located right there. And we're also gonna go ahead and unsolder the speaker wire, which is located right here. Once you have unsoldered the wires, go ahead and pop up the power board. gently and the last step that you need to do is go ahead and disconnect the power board from the charger port ribbon we're going to go ahead and remove the bad power board aside on this one i can tell that there's some corrosion right there so it's a bad power board once that is complete we're going to go ahead and take the new power board and before I do anything, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and plug in the charger port ribbon back into the power board. If you're having difficulties plugging it in, this is where the tweezers come in handy. You can go ahead and grab the tweezers to hold the ribbon and you just kind of push it back in like so. Once that is connected, go ahead and pop the power board back into place. There are little grooves that ensure it is installed correctly into place. Once you have put it back into place, next step is we're gonna go ahead and install the two screws that we originally removed. It doesn't matter what order you go in, you can do the bottom screw first and the top screw or vice versa. Once the screws are installed, you're gonna go ahead and gently plug the main wire back into the power board. Make sure you evenly do it so that you don't bend any pins inside the power board connection. And we're gonna push down, make sure it's all connected. That's good. And then we're just gonna take these wires and just tuck them. All right, so once we plugged the main wire back into the power board and we screwed everything in and the charger port is, the ribbon is connected to the power board. Next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and solder these wires back on. When you're soldering wires, I highly recommend you use flux on the solder points. This is gonna make sure that the solder connection binds and that it's strong 
And it also gives you that nice clean solder look as well. So for this one, we're gonna go ahead and do the speaker wire first. This is where your handy dandy tweezers come into play. We're gonna go ahead and grab copper wire, solder it on the inside point. Like so. And then we're gonna take the red wire and solder it to the outside point. Once that is complete, we're gonna take the microphone wire, solder that next. First we do the copper one. And then the red wire. Then the last wire that we're gonna do is the white wire for the MS port, the mic bit that is placed on the speaker. First wire is gonna be the copper. And then the second one is the red. So in case you forgot which color is which, the white wire goes first, it goes red copper, and then you got the black wire that's next to the white one, it goes red copper, and then the speaker wire right here, it goes copper red. Once that is done, go ahead and place these wires back into the holders just to kind of make it nice and neat, get them out of the way. You could use your flat head to gently press them in. Don't press too hard so that you're not damaging the wire. And then next we're gonna go ahead and tuck this wire back away to how it originally was. Beautiful. Once we put the power board back into place and all the wires are soldered, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install the battery. I'm gonna go ahead, place it, make sure that where the wire is, that this is facing downward, facing you. We're gonna go ahead, pop the battery back into place. And next step we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and connect this ribbon, plug it back into the power board. Once that is complete, we're gonna go ahead, plug the battery into the power board, make sure that these two holes in the battery clip match with the two pins that are in the power board right here. You don't wanna accidentally plug it right side up and damage the pins, then you're gonna have to replace the power board again or you might get lucky and be able to unbend the pins, but we checked, it's right side up. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug it in, like so. Once that is done, go ahead and just tuck the wires right back in here to give it that nice clean look. Once that is complete, Next step, we're gonna go ahead and take the touchpad ribbon and we're gonna connect it to the power board. Once we connected the touchpad to the power board, we're gonna go ahead and close cover. You can also pull the headphones, bend it in this way to make sure that it is flush. Once that is done, go ahead, set it on this side and the next step is placing these screws back into the speaker housing, which remember the silver ones have the little arrow indicators on the speaker housing. 
I'm gonna go ahead and place these four screws back in. Once the four screws are placed back in, we're gonna go ahead and put this foam piece back onto the speaker. The flat part goes with the flatter end and the rounder part goes where it's more rounded on the speaker. And then last step is popping the ear pad back in. Make sure you line up these pins with the holes. I kind of like to do the top part first. I'll just kind of line it up and then I'll place the speaker or the ear pad over the speaker and just on the ends go ahead and push down. You should hear the ear pad clip into the speaker. I'm just kind of go around double check it. Once that is complete, just kind of tug on the ear pad, see if it pops off. If not, then you know that you have fastened the ear pad securely on there. And once that is done, you are all complete. And that, my friends, is how you replace the power board on your Sony's 1000 XM4 headphones.